My name is Kamal Erkin. I'm the chairman of American Surgery Center, and I have Dr. Ajayat Ergan with me, our president for CREAS. So, uh, between uh, obesity actually almost in some cases being the taboo and having uh, people not understanding this chronic illness. Uh, when you deal with diabetes, hypertension, sleep apnea, cardiac issues, and then you have issues uh, with sex. So now why this is important? Uh, Dr. Gary, it's not like I was just thinking about, oh, let's just talk about sex, but it was more about what people are dealing with, what, what they may be having uh, in their lives that they are not sharing with us. Now, uh, as I was looking for this, uh, for us to be able to discuss, uh, several studies are available. And uh, one of them uh, talks about uh, why bariatric surgery actually is uh, able to improve your sex life. Um, and then uh, this is kind of interesting because for one person of women reported improvements in sexual desire and at least one half of the men experience improvement in, the, uh, in sexual activity. Now, Dr. Ria, before I let you take over, um, uh, you know, uh, the, the issue, uh, it's not like 10 patients were calling me and then I came up with this. I just wanted to kind of see what may be missing. Because, you know, uh, when I did the session with Dr. Uh, Babe, uh, you know, colonoscopy is sometimes it's like a topic for jokes, especially among men. Oh, you're going to have your colonoscopy. Like, we are looking for problems, right? We are not we are not interested in the colon in any other way other than the health reasons. So, mm -hmm. but I understand. So it's kind of like sometimes you find some humor in these. Um, and then uh, when we look at the reason why we are talking about sex today. When we look at the reason um, uh, and what may be missing in people's life, uh, especially when they are dealing with morbid obesity, is uh, something that I actually borrow from WebMD, the top 20 reason uh, people have sex. And uh, as you can see, sexual motives go far beyond the big three, love, pleasure, and making babies. So boosting mood, uh, relieving depression, duty, enhancement of power, enhancement of self-concept, experiencing the power of the one's partner, feeling loved by your partner, fostering jealousy, improving reputation or social status, making money, making babies, um, needs for affection, uh, nutrients, partner novelty, peer pressure, uh, pleasure, reducing sex drive, revenge, sexual curiosity, showing love to your partner, and spiritual uh, transcendence. So now, all these, uh, if you are, if you don't have any physical issues, uh, then you are, as you can see, there are a lot of these that you would like to have a checkpoint, uh, check, 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 right? So it's not like uh, maybe like uh, fostering jealousy, I don't know why it's there, or this uh, revenge, I don't know why it's there, but if you look at it, 80% of this is something that everyone wants to have. So that's why I actually brought this up because we talk about well-being for our patients and well-being is not just being, um, uh, being able to lose weight. So we, we, discuss, we, we define the well-being as several different things, several different aspects of well-being. And sex is one part of it. As you can see the list, um, feeling loved by your partner. If you are not able to have sex because of morbid obesity, that feeling loved is gone. So the boosting mood and relieving depression. So like just because you have, you may be dealing with morbid obesity shouldn't be uh, the reason for you are missing out on uh, this benefit. So just wanted to kind of discuss this from the clinical side, what you go through with your patients, what you can tell us um, uh, in terms of what patients uh, are experiencing. Are, do they share these with you? Uh, and there are some studies I know that you'll make some references. So 
let's talk about sex. Sure, absolutely. So uh, when the you know WebMD list obviously lists what people may say uh, for their uh, you know why they um, engage in sex, um, clearly having a healthy sexual life is part of a general well-being of a person. There is no question about that. The very first slide you showed, Kamal, that was very interesting, is you, you showed clearly that bariatric surgery leads to an improvement in the uh, sexual life of many of the patients who have undergone bariatric surgery. That's really a very important point that you're making here. Well, when you look at it intuitively, Kamal, it makes sense, right? Because our patients, after they lose massive amounts of weight and they get rid of this burden, they feel a lot better about themselves in many ways. So consequentially, you would expect uh, for them to be happier as well about their sexual life. And it is, in fact, studies have demonstrated that. What is very important to point from that perspective, Kamal, is that how obesity also affects sexual well-being of a person, right? That is really the corollary that we have here. You have a disease, right, obesity, that not only leads to tangible medical and health problems like diabetes, like high blood pressure, like sleep apnea, but this actually affects many other psychological aspects of one's life as well, right? It is no surprise that uh, incidence of depression, incidence of anxiety and other mental illnesses is actually increased when uh, we are affected by obesity. So not only do we have physical affecting diseases, but we have psychological and mental issue, um, uh, mental health problems also associated with obesity. And really, a healthy, a healthy uh, uh, sexual life also requires us not only to be healthy physically, but also to be in a better place from an emotional point of view and from a psychological point of view. And obesity deprives us of that. So it is no surprise that when researchers went to ask people that are suffering from obesity, uh, specific questions that indicate happiness in their sexual life, the scores were very low for people who have high body mass indices, for people who suffer from obesity. Well, the researchers did this for both men and women, and the results were similar from that point of view, right? The interesting thing that you brought about here, Kamal, is that when researchers went back to people who have had bariatric surgery and asked the same questions, they saw improvement. This was research that looked asked those questions before bariatric surgery and then followed up questions after bariatric surgery. So there was improvement. So no, obesity, not only it is affecting us organically by affecting us physical, our physical health, but it affects our mental health. And guess what? Sexual health really is affected both by uh, physical issues, but also uh, psychological issues. And obesity tends to affect both of them. And in terms of how important this issue is for us to talk about it, come out, this is really a very important issue for everyone, right? And yet both health providers and patients don't readily bring it about, you know, for a number of issues. I mean, I was uh, making the observation that, you know, whenever I do uh, some, uh, a surgical procedure and we talk about recovery, most patients will be readily asking me when they will be allowed to drive, when they will be allowed to lift weight, okay? But the patients who will ask me about timeline for intimacy are far in between. And yet that may be very important in their mind, but they are reticent to bring that issue. Similarly, the issue of how much obesity is affecting their sexual life is something that we don't hear about. But underneath, we know it is happening. And those researchers are really bringing this to light right now, right? So uh, simple issues of how comfortable are you to be undressed, you know, in front of your partner, to how much anxiety or depression you feel when you think about a sexual relationship, you know what I'm saying? Because of the uh, issues of self-esteem, because of the issues of performance related to obesity, those things drag down a person's 
sense of well-being and sense of happiness drastically, right? And as soon as their sense of a sense, uh, self-esteem increases after weight loss come up, as once they feel much more empowered about their own, uh, you know, uh, their, their own appearance, their own physical well-being, then their uh, confidence level increases as well. And though the anxiety and the depression related to thinking about sex decreases considerably, and so does their uh, in terms of their appearance as well. So there is really no surprise, come on. But beyond that, obesity does affect some uh, hormonal changes also that have a direct impact on the uh, sexual health of uh, people. So getting rid of obesity will obviously improve those uh, hormonal changes as well. I think, uh, Dr. Real, uh, the, uh, the term prevention and uh, with the prevention, uh, are we able to predict what's going to happen? So it's not everything that we talk about is what's happening today, but mm -hmm. what may be happening 10 years from now, five years from now. Mm -hmm. Now, when we look at the uh, sexual well-being um, uh, with any individual, um, so there's one part of it is sex. The other part is, especially for our female um, patients who are dealing with morbid obesity, uh, menopause is one of the big... Um, uh, impact that they have in their life. And with the obesity, this may uh, be even more, the impact may be even more severe. So, um, and I do want to kind of, uh, I, I want us to talk about that part as well. So when it comes to uh, uh, female patients, uh, weight gain and menopause, what's the correlation there? So that's actually an extremely interesting and important point, Kamal, right? One of the frustrations many women face is that they find that at a certain stage of their life, not only is really very difficult for them to lose weight, but they lose completely the, the ability to control the weight gained, right? Despite the fact that there is no change in their dietary habits and their activity level, once they approach menopause, right? They find that there is sudden gaining of weight. Well, this has to do with some hormonal changes that naturally women go through at, at a certain age, and that is with decreased activity of the female organs, which decreases in certain hormones like uh, estrogen. That's, you know, it happens gradually. It doesn't happen immediately. That's why it's called perimenopause, which is something that is approaching menopause. And then menopause in when there is complete stoppage of product of the periods uh, of the menstrual cycle um, related to the, the, to the changes. And that at, at menopause, there is a struggle with weight and that is related with the changes in hormones as well, right? That also does affect many aspects of sexual health. So you have obesity, you have menopause, and it's a combination really that can lead to a lot of um, unhappiness and uh, dissatisfaction, not only because of the weight gain, but also because of the changes menopause brings about as well, right? Now, if you add to that obesity and what, can, what obesity can do to one's sexual health, you can understand how these issues can become uh, superimposed to each other, essentially, come out. So it is not surprising that these two issues are related. And, uh, you know, in, in, in my experience, when I talk to women, very often they will talk with frustration on how they have lost control of their weight once they reach the uh, menopause stage. Uh, 